This is Coffee Country and Cody. Cody. Everybody, welcome in Coffee Country and Cody. It's Kelly Sutton, Charlie Manos. We have Annie Nye and Jeff Roberts in the house. And very soon, Zoe is going to be here to see us. We love hanging out with her. She hasn't been in the new studio yet. So can't wait to catch up with her and see what's happening in her world. Y'all have tuned in for the perfect morning. Um, two of us just came back from flights last night. So that would be Annie and myself. I think we were probably in the airport right about the same time last night uh i flew in from new york she flew in from new jersey so we had big big doings this weekend we're going to talk about that plus we've been discussing because (laughs) annie was at a wedding so it just got you know my wheels turning worst thing you've ever seen happen at a wedding either before during after but in that setting something bad that's Mm -hmm. happened so we've been talking about that and um, if you have something, you can always join in on social media as well. Worst thing that you've seen happen at a wedding. Because why not? I mean, something always goes wrong. Whether you know it or not, something always happens behind the scenes. Oh, and the person whose wedding it is is very aware of when something goes wrong. Unless the bridesmaids are wonderful and keep it from her. They find out eventually, though, right? Hopefully oh, for afterwards, sure. right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, yes, yeah. The ultimate uh, I, Ross, uh, take the Rachel moment, perhaps. <sighs> yes. Uh, Emily. <laughs> we have to play. We're going to play that from Friends. That's one of our absolute favorites. Uh, lo- coming up, entertainment headlines. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about as well. Morgan Wallen headlining at uh, Neyland Stadium over the weekend. He was there Friday and again last night. His special guests that were out there with him. So stay tuned for that because that was a really big doings over the weekend. And Vince Gill debuting Heartache Tonight. Mm-hmm. I think that's the. it might be the first time that he sang lead on that, I think. Um He's been with the Eagles since 2017. Maybe not. He may have seen. He may have had it before. But this is the first time that he had a chance to do it in the sphere, the <laughs> big, huge ball that's in Las Vegas. We we're talking about how massive it is. I found the video. The Eagles doing their residency there. Stay tuned because it's like some kind of weird acid trip. And I brought it in. I said, you guys have got to see this. Yeah. It's kind of crazy and out there. So that's coming up in entertainment headlines. From Zoe, brand new, 666. And she's going to be playing that at the Bluebird Cafe coming up October 30th. It's kind of haunting. It feels very of the Halloween genre. Was it this purposeful that we've got all this happening? Um, A little spooky? You know what? The magic is just, it happens sometimes. And I think that's okay. (laughs) I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. I have to say, when I see, because it's the number six, or it's spelled out six, number six, spelled out six. Yes. So I was like, I'm not sure. Is this 666? Mm -hmm. Tell me the origin about the song and (laughs) and why you wrote it like that. So I obviously, when when I started performing, I started busking on the streets. That was how I got my start, which I think we've talked about before on the show. But I was in Glasgow one particular afternoon on the streets busking. It was super hot. It was the middle of summer. And to get people to stop and stay and pay attention to your set is really tough because people are not there to see you. They're doing something. They're going from place to place. So they're not there for a show. So if you get them to stop, it's incredible and and you want to hold on to them. And I remember this one particular afternoon, there was this really good looking guy and he stopped and he watched my whole show for a couple of hours. Like I was there for a couple of hours and he watched the whole thing. And as I'm sitting there, I'm play- I think I was playing like maybe Country Roads or something and I'm like, you know, singing away. And as you do when you're singing, you're thinking about other things and like thoughts kind of pop into your mind. And so I'm like, wow, he's got to be about six foot. Like that's okay. He's pretty good looking. He's yeah. like, maybe, you know, he's like six figure and six pack. And that just kind of rolled around in my mind for a second. And I'm like, that's not bad. I'm going to pop that in my back pocket and just hang on to that. And so I think it was about three or four years later when I finally he- came here to Nashville, I'm in my co-writer session and my co-writers are like, so what do you want to write today? I'm like, well, this is kind of crazy. I have this idea that I never did anything with. And, um, what do you think about it? It's a six foot, six pack, six figure. And they're like, oh my gosh, we're writing that right now. So I was very fortunate to get to write this with Bonnie Diamond and Clay Johnson, who just had a number one hit with Lana Del Rey and Quavo, which was pretty amazing. Oh, Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, very cool. So it was been a really, I've been really lucky to get to collab with some amazing people since I've been in Nashville. So that's so good. So, so how do you save things like that for a few years? Do you just trust your memory or is it it an iPhone memo or a note? Or did you? It's usually my 
iPhone. Okay, or some, right. No, I don't even remember what I had for breakfast. Pretty sure I didn't have breakfast, actually. Okay, but right. yeah, no, I don't trust my brain. <laughs> not for that I, kind of By stuff. the way, just take me back a second. Uh, Glasgow is one of those places I've always wanted to go to. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm a huge soccer fan. And there is oh, yeah. no better rivalry in world sports than oh. Celtic and Rangers. And unfortunately... <laughs> If you pick one side, you don't speak to the other side. I mean, it's that. No, it's got throat. It's that oh, hateful wow. of a. But what what a vibe in that city, though, Unbelievable. huh? Unbelievable. I mean, the, the crazy things that I've been able to see in that city, sport related, mm-hmm. alone. I mean, when they leave, they have their own their own venue where they play football yeah. and when they leave in their tour buses t- like there's people throwing stuff at the ball oh, like it's yeah. violently yeah. Ex- yeah they're they're hardcore but you know incredible but incredible you grew sport. up in tasmania or australia no tasmania okay. australia okay yeah so i grew up down there um about six hours from anywhere that looked like a city um lived by the coast and raced motorbikes for a long time and dove for abalone and crayfish and thought that was gonna be my life and then i had a really really good motorbike accident which kind of nearly near death I got a big scar on the back of my head from it and um I was like okay it kind of really it really brought me into music and I feel like that was the that was the turning point where I went this is it for me and I realized that music was was my calling have you written that song yet you know, I think the closest I've got to it is probably Whatever It Takes. And I, that, that's kind of the song, Whatever It Takes mm-hmm. to Follow Your Dream and Follow Your Heart. And um, that's about the closest I've, I've come to it. I don't know if anyone would really relate to my backstory because it's kind of unique. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, it's pretty. But, but at the same time, just having that moment right. of like, that wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This might not be what I want to do. Maybe my next song. You okay. might have just, you might be a co-writer Let me right know. Now. Give yeah. me a call. I'm okay. free. <laughs> I'll so come pop over. What does endurance motocross entail, though? Because oh, that sounds like either many hours or crazy long distances. Both. Both. Okay. Um, yeah, so most of the races I did would be about eight hours long. Um, and you wow. got to stop pit stop the, the laps are normally about two hours in depending on how fast you can do it's all through terrain rough terrain wow. like through like crazy sort of terrain and are you solo um, or do you have a team where someone no, else solo oh solo gosh, yeah wow. and you're just scramble basically to get yeah, there and hope yeah. that you make it to the other <laughs> end before <laughs> your buddies get there because if they get there you're done so yeah i had a lot of friends get hurt a lot of legs got broken a lot of all sorts of injuries happen and i, I kind of after i had my accident it was like a bit of a wake-up call and and then it was like yeah you know what music is it mm-hmm. it was kind of like it was a teetering moment and that was the that was the final but you didn't come straight here i couldn't I couldn't get my visa. It took forever to get my visa. And so I ended up going to the UK and, and building my, my, you know, my everything there and building my audience. And, um, and then eventually two and a half years ago, I was able to get my visa to come. So here I am. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize it was just two and a half years ago. I feel like we've was, known you longer than that. I feel like we have too. I know. I'm going to just say we have because it just feels like it's been longer. You're one of those old souls. Oh, That's it. it. Mm-hmm. That's what Likewise. it is. When you got here, how quickly did you fall in with the right people? Because I've heard that from so many people. When they get to Nashville, it can be very intimidating. Everyone wants the same thing. It can feel like it's a very cutthroat town. But when you find the right people that you write with and do yeah. life with, that it just becomes very collaborative and more of a community. I've, I've been, I got to say, very lucky in the sense that when I came, I feel like I was very welcomed by a lot of great people, a lot Good. of great songwriters, um, you know, from Phil Barton to Jeff Cohen to this one to that one to all these different people who have just kind of welcomed me and helped me find my feet. And of course, moving across the world isn't the first time, it's not the first time I've done this. So, um, you know, going to the UK first and now finally coming here, it's been such a dream to be in Nashville and I can't, I can't fault any of it. It's, it's my little heart, my little five-year-old soul is just cheering constantly and I'm so grateful that, yeah, it's been, it's been a transition, but I'm, I'm lucky that it's been a good one. Have you been back to the UK? I have. I haven't been back to Australia. Okay. I have to. I have to sometime make that trip. It's just really a long since way. the two since you came. Not since I left. Well, well it's a commitment. You don't go for the weekend. No, uh, it's not, really. <laughs> right. it's not an overnight bag yeah. deal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I tell you what, though, the fact that it is such a commitment means yeah. that when you come here, you're really here. Because yeah. the, the plan B is not an easy plan B. So you got to stick with the plan A. It's not, like, it. it's not like you're driving to Chattanooga and you're home in an hour and a half. That's right? true. Right. So yeah. true. Yeah. I, th- I really got to say I'm very grateful for video calls because that's kept me very mm-hmm. sort of able to stay in contact with family and stuff. Oh. That helps bridge the gap. Oh, mm. I love it. Zoe. <laughs> there are Thank so many, you. so many people that are hearing that this morning going, yeah, I wish I could just turn that voice oh, down. Right. Right. 
And sometimes so you have to physically say to yourself, I can't listen to all of that that's happening in my head because yeah. I know it's all not true. Yeah. I so, think yeah. that's one thing I actually learned. You're right about that. It's, it's your thoughts are one thing, but they're not you. Right. Which is a really important thing to remember because it, it can get really loud and really confusing and it's tough. It's oh, tough. So happy so. for you. Thank you. So tell me about the show that you're doing coming up on the 10th. It's the, is it, do they call it APRA or is it APRA? APRA. No, oh, APRA. It APRA. It's, okay. it's, um, it's like my BMI yeah. affiliate. So we're actually linked through BMI, which is fun. So they're doing their first ever in the round out there at the local. So that'll be fun. I'm, I'm very excited awesome. for that. So, okay. Yeah. So that's going to be happening on the 10th. On the 10th. And, and then, then the 30th, you're at the Bluebird. And then 30th and back at the Bluebird. Have you, how many times have you done the Bluebird now? I, you know what? I've been really lucky. Erica keeps having me back. She's she so you. sweet. <laughs> uh, I, I would say it's probably about a dozen times now. And they even, oh. she had me out at the Bluebird on the mountain, which was such a joy. Oh my I gosh. I have never been. And every time that I've wanted to go, it has been sold out for everybody that's listening. Bluebird on the mountain is at the Dyer Observatory. Mm -hmm. So it's Incredible. on the hill where the Starry big, sky. huge telescope oh, is. It's heaven. It's heaven. And I mean, it sells out in minutes. It does. If I get to play it again and she does want to have me back, Back, uh, you guys funny. are coming. You have I'm to come. coming. I want to see that. That's <laughs> amazing. amazing. So it's beautiful. What's the best way for everybody to keep up with you on social media? On social media, um, yes. Yeah, so Zoe Music, Z O W -E, E Music. Um, I'm pretty much putting everything up on there, and and that's kind of where I like to talk with my fans a lot. So I spend a lot of time doing all the social media stuff. So you can find me um, pretty much everywhere over there. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. By the way, one question. Yes. This stage. This is this is the Ryman, right? That is mm -hmm. wood from the Ryman stage. The same wood that is in the circle on the Grand Ole Opry. Wow. Yeah. yeah. If this little stage could talk. Right. I'm, I'm sure oh. it would say, get off, you're really heavy. <laughs> no. Loretta Lynn was lighter. No, no, Does no, that no. technically mean that I get to say I'll play the Opry stage now? Oh. You know what? Let's save that Does for that when you get to. I want, uh, I want okay. that to happen okay. for you. I, that's fair. You're that's amazing. Fair. Thanks you're for so hanging sweet. out with us. Thank you for having me. It's always Zoe, a Zoe with two E's, everybody. So go find her on social media. 666 is the new song. And we played it right here for you on Coffee Country and Cody on WSM. Welcome in, everybody. It's Coffee Country and Cody hanging out with you this morning. Kelly Sutton, Charlie Meadows, Annie Nye, and Jeff Roberts. And we have been talking in our entertainment headlines about things that we've seen happen at weddings that were not great. <laughs> so Annie and I just flew home from a wedding. She was uh, attending, not in, but attending in the Poconos. And I had a friend that I saw in New York. She had been at a wedding. So we kind of flew home together, buddied up with the fam and, and all flew home together. And that just got the wheels turning. Like worst things that you've seen happen at a wedding. Charlie Mattos. Uh, we got married, uh, Renee and I, almost 20 years ago. It'll be 20 years this May. Outdoors at Cheekwood, mm -hmm. the beautiful gardens and yeah. mansion here in Nashville. And we were in the herb garden. We had a beautiful set in, kind of a natural amphitheater, and these beautiful columns from the Tennessee, Tennessee State Capitol. Mm -hmm. And Renee and her bridesmaids had spent hours and hours and hours making these beautiful bouquets, right? Oh. And they sat on top of the columns. And about an hour and a half before the wedding, this massive thunderstorm blows through, like 40 mile an hour winds, and just blows oh. all the flowers down this huge embankment. It wasn't just they like blew oh. them over. Like, you, we couldn't even find them. Um, but, you know, it sun came not, out almost 20 years fine. later we're still here You're still so going it, strong. Could, it, it was okay so yeah we were talking about this earlier and you found one of our favorite clips oh, from friends absolutely love so <laughs> best part emily uh, shall i go on he, he said rachel right oh Did you say rachel? <laughs> i take the rachel oh, no. oh i mean emily, emily. Yeah, that was a big faux pas. I've never heard somebody be called by the wrong name. I have been at a wedding where the groom um, told us just moments before he didn't think he could go through with it. Mm. And? He did. Okay. We forced him. <laughs> it happened. Well, wait a minute. Are they still together? Yes. Oh, okay. They're good. They're still okay. together. Everything right. is fine. Okay. He just had the worst case of cold feet. And this was a destination wedding. So we had all flown to oh, Jamaica. Wow. For this wedding and i mean just a few hours before he's like i i just i don't know guys i don't know if i can do this wow. and he's a prankster anyway so we were like ha 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 very funny but then when you saw the look on his face and how sweaty he was i don't think he was kidding so anyway well it is a panicky moment it can be it can you know? be yes he made it so, down the yeah. aisle 
If you've got bad stories, join us on social media. You can find me, the Kelly Sutton, on Instagram. We'd love to hear them. Hang tight with us on WSM Radio. we got Mason Ramsey coming in the studio, and we'll see you on TV tomorrow. From WSM Radio, this is Coffee Country and Cody. We are sitting in our brand new A Cup house on the Opry Plaza, and we are so excited to welcome in Mason Ramsey. How you been? I'm doing very good. How are you? I'm doing so good. It's so good to see you. Thank you so much. It's very nice to be here. And you have a new album, too. I did. It just came out uh, on the 20th of this month, and um, it's pretty cool because it's my first album. So that I'm super feels excited. That impossible, Mason. How is this your debut album? We've known you too long for this to be the debut, right? I know. I've been, I've been, I've had a lot of little moments to lead up to this big moment, but right. um, it's definitely been worth the wait. So take us back. First little bout of fame when we got to know you, obviously, from a viral video. How old were you then? 11, I, th- I believe. I was, yes, I was 11 at the time. Wow. That really puts you into a whole different world. Were you, I, I can't imagine you were really ready for all of the things that came along with that. Like everybody then knowing who you were and being recognized. How quickly did that happen? Was it overnight? Was it a couple weeks? It, I, I don't really remember because uh, whenever it happened, um, I didn't know about it till a week later. Okay. Because you probably weren't even on social media, were you? So funny story. My, my grandparents don't have internet at all. Uh, we, we, um, we have, um, antenna TV and we have, um, like phones where you just like, like, like manual phones. <laughs> real like phones? Just, yeah. Real, like real old school phones. Bless your grandparents. That's amazing. So, <laughs> when everything else goes down, they'll be the ones that can still communicate. Absolutely. That's amazing. Well, yeah. And hopefully radio, right? Yeah. You gotta have yes, radio. Yes. They've got, okay. they've got, they've got, yes. Um, <laughs> so you really just didn't realize how quickly the video of you yodeling caught on and then it just was like a big you know flame really it, after it, that it, it was um i you know i was a, a kid at the time i really didn't know what was going on sure. i just i was taken by surprise and um i just I rode the wave i guess as as you do i mean it's a should. different world well here's a question for you did you always think that you wanted to do music even before all of that stuff did you you obviously could sing and that's what you were doing so was that always kind of your career path in the back of your mind that's what you wanted i mean it, it yeah um i had that mindset of always wanting to be a singer ever since i was um the age of three wow. um i just wanted to be uh um a singer and obviously I was in my music at the time was influenced by uh, Hank Williams senior so yeah. I would always sing his songs and, and go everywhere and um, my, my grandparents would like help me take take me to some places locally and like get me set up and stuff so I could sing and and just jam it was like it was really cool well that was one of those blips of fame another is being part of arguably one of the biggest songs in the world a uh, little tune called Old Town Road. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's an entirely different level of craziness, right? Yes, yes it is. Um, I, I got the call to do that, uh, like to be on that song, um, I believe it was like 10 o'clock at night, and it was a late call from my, manage, my management um, team. Uh, I guess Lil Nas X had reached out to them, and we were like, we want Mason to be on this song. Um, and so I, I went uh, in with Ernest um, over at Big Loud, and I I wrote, me and him got together and wrote uh, a little line to go in the song, and I recorded it, and it got to be put on the song, and I was, it, it was it was a really cool moment for me because then it, it led to me um, getting a moment at the Grammys and being on stage there. It was really cool. You know, looking at all of this and knowing that all of this has come at you so fast and furious and for somebody that wasn't grounded and wasn't um already really sure of who they are it could have thrown them completely off course but then we see you come out and now you've got your debut album and you know exactly what your sound is and who you want to be how long did it take you to figure that out because i think it's really unfair when people get thrust into the spotlight when they're young like that when you're 11 because you're just trying to grow up and at the same time everyone else is watching you grow up it's like 
you can't just be a kid. You can't figure out what you want. So how did you figure out what your sound was going to be for this first album? Well, it, it wasn't easy uh, getting to where obviously I'm at. Um, I had to try out different people and, and, right. and you know, it, it took me a good little bit of time, but um, I finally found uh, this guy named Dan Fernandez and I went in with him and he, he just, like, I told him, like, what I wanted, like, my sound of music, what I listen to daily. Um, and he was like, okay, well, let's, let's take pieces and let's combine them and let's yeah. make it you. And that's what we did. We just, like, I'm very influenced by Johnny Cash, uh, Ricky Nelson, Roy Orbison, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Hank Williams. Yeah. Um, Chuck Berry. I mean, I could, the list is, is, is never ending. So I, I've got like almost like <laughs> 600, almost 700 songs on my Sp Spotify playlist that I listen to. <laughs> I love um, that. But it, it's, yeah. What's the most out of the box one? If we, if we actually looked at your playlist, like, wow, I didn't expect Mason to be listening to this. Oh, Little Nas X. Um, <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> no, um, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure along the way I've added, um, I think, what does the fox say is on there or something <laughs> like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you I, gotta have one. Of sadly, those. I have that one on mine too from, uh, <laughs> from my true. little guy at home. I was telling Mason off the air that uh, I, I got to work that night when he and Billy Ray did Old Town Road at the, uh, at the, at the on the Opry stage, right? Yeah. Cool and it's one of the few times that my son has been impressed with what I did because it's like, Daddy, you know the Old Town Road people? I'm like, damn right, I do. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. So we're gonna play the video for "I'll See You in My Dreams," which is the title track. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and um, I want everybody to know more about the song and then also mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about the video because we're going to play it all on our streaming services as well. So give me the details. So I wrote uh, I'll See You in My Dreams about this girl that I got to see during the day. And, you know, whenever it was fixing to become nighttime, um, it, it was time for her to go back home uh, as well, for me to go back home as well. And I just... I would see her in my dreams. And so it just kind of talks about that. And, and, and a lot of the album um, that, I, that I wanted to make clear to everyone, it's very storytelling-like. So you have to pay very uh, close attention to the lyrics. Um, and, and I did the um, music video in, um, in a cafe uh, or, a, or a, like a diner. Mm -hmm. Um, to what match it, to match the sound of of music, it, and uh, I got to sign the wall. Actually, it's very familiar, very reminiscent of uh, one on Elliston Place. Is it uh, exactly the one on Elliston Place? Because those signs oh, in the background look very yeah. familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Oh, I believe so. The best perfect. malt on the planet, Elliston, Elliston Place, Place Soda, soda shop. shop. Absolutely, oh, yep. I can't wait to yeah. watch it. Yes, it's soda it. Shop. Yeah. More coffee, country, and Cody is on WSM. We're catching up with Mason Ramsey in the studio with us. The debut album is out now, and he's playing The Basement East tomorrow night. Doors open at 7, so you can go out and see him. But he's hanging out with us this morning after he just stepped off a plane from North Carolina. Do you have to, like, sometimes just take a moment and go, where am I exactly in the world? That's every day for me. <laughs> Well, Charlie just looked up your tour schedule. You've got like 38 shows left Ooh. until the end of the year. Something like that. Yeah. Well, I have 38 shows all together. I think okay. I, I've just done four or yeah, something. Yeah, so 34 still to go. Yeah. Before, mid, before a little break before Christmas. Can you believe that? That's a yeah. lot, friend. Yeah. That's a lot. But you yeah. are taking Christmas off at least. Uh, I don't know. I think they got me back in the studio. Okay. But, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's always uh, something management right i tell you what <laughs> well, when you put else. out that debut album then there's a lot that goes along with it it's the album promotion and talking to people and i just saw cmt posted a video with you you did some sessions for them in studio absolutely so it's good to be wanted yes yes it is um you know it, the main thing that that um that's been really exciting for me is getting to also to perform this new music and new material yeah. uh, for the fans and like uh, just give them hints and pieces of it live um, and putting it out on social media and stuff. It's been really cool. 
Mm. And for those who are vinyl folks, now the whole album is out now, but if you're yes. a vinyl collector, early December, you can pre-order that on your website, and it's a double vinyl, which is really cool, too. Yes, yes, mm. it is. Do you collect vinyl? I do, actually. I have a, an Elvis Presley, a Johnny Cash, um, a couple of Dean Martin um, vinyls back at home. Um, my my cousin has a bunch of Frank Sinatra and, and Dean Martin. He's big in that world, which has kind of inspired me to go a little bit into that. But um, that's but a yeah. fun world to get in. But those Sun labels, man, when you see those somewhere, it's you want to grab them. Yeah, yeah. those, those are cool. the hard ones to collect. Mm-hmm. Well, introduce your band this morning. <laughs> this is my best friend slash guitarist Jonah. Hi, Jonah. And, uh, AKA James Burton Jr. That's right. Cool. <laughs> That's right. Oh, you're, you're going in the Hall of Fame in oh. October. Yeah. Someday. Someday. That's it. That's Someday. amazing. Well, we got to play I'll See You in My Dreams, which we saw um, the video for as well that you did at Elliston Place Soda Shop. Beautifully shot. Mm-hmm. Loved it. Yeah, very dreamy. It, it kind of fits the mood of the song. It's and great. It has yeah. that kind of throwback mm-hmm. feel to it. Now you're going to do How Do I Know If I'm in Love? So give us more details on this song. So. The meaning of this was just to um, just like kind of question myself in the song, you know, do I really know if I'm in love? How do I know? Or do you just kind of know when you know and <laughs> go you, with the flow or what? Right. Um, if you figure it out, let everybody else yeah, know. Exactly. Think, yes. Yeah, yes. It's a very universal question. Uh-huh. Oh, that is so good. Mason Ramsey in the studio with us this morning. Man, I remember the last time you played, I don't know if it was the last time that you played the Opry, but the last time you played the Opry that I was working, I watched the entire front section when you performed. And uh, there were girls that were 14 and 15, and there were women who were 70, and all of them were swooning all at the same time. Is it odd to you when you look out into the audience and you have grandmas and granddaughters who are all falling in love with you at the same time? Um, it's not strange to me at all, actually. That's that's the kind of the goal is to, to you know get all the all the people. That's right. And, um, you know, if if I'm winning at that, I must be doing something right. You are. You are winning at well, that. Well, I will tell you. You know, it is an interesting phenomenon though, because you can meet someone for the first time, but they will feel like they've known you a long time, Absolutely. and it's a weird kind of dichotomy there, right? Speaking of which, that was the way it was whenever I met Lana Del Rey for the very first time. Really. Mm-hmm. She yes. immediately mm-hmm. just felt like she'd known you? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and, 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 well, not, not just that. I felt like I'd known her, like, literally, almost mm-hmm. forever. Um, she, she's just got, like, a very, like, she's, she's very quiet behind stage, but um, she's very confident in who she is in and, and, and the music. And, um, you know, she's very down-to-earth, humble, um, and just overall very sweet and that's um awesome. and 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 that, that's that's what you want to see in in an artist you performed with her in june absolutely how did that come about so i i posted a video of my song blue over you on tiktok and um she reached out to me actually um I don't remember if it was, I think it was on Instagram because I posted the same video on Instagram. But anyways, she had reached out to me and she was like, we, hey, we need to collab. And I was like, absolutely, let's do it. And then a couple of months later, she was like, hey, I want you to come out to Fenway with me and sing Blue Over You. And I got to do that. I was like, <laughs> like, I was like super excited. I'd never been to Fenway Park. I've never been to a Lana Del Rey concert, but you know, I've always loved her music and stuff. So it was just really cool to like, one, get to meet her, right. two, get to sing on stage, and three, go to Fenway Park. I that's mean, like, that's the three in one right there. 1910, Fenway Park. <laughs> and still, incredible. and still much of it feels like it's a hundred years old. I mean, they've modernized it, but there's the history is still there. Too, Absolutely. So. Were you nervous walking out on that stage? Because it's different than walking on a stage that you've done before, like the Opry, where you know they know you. You're walking in front of people that you're like, um, do they know me? Are they going to like me? I mean, it, I would be nervous. Were you nervous? I wouldn't say I was nervous until about the part I started singing. <laughs> uh, I normally don't get nervous, but, you know, it's like, um, I, I don't know, like, 
there there had been a couple of things before like it, it just it started to rain or something and and uh, yeah, um yeah some things were going on and and she only had so much time and I was kind of nervous because my pack was messing up but oh, um but um you know I, I I got into the song and I was like okay I got this mm-hmm. you know and which is funny because whenever I you know I'm under pressure I I, I sing um really well in 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 the studio and, and on stage um I wouldn't say it's pressure but it's just it's like nervous excitement I guess is the proper word right. for that like you're just like super excited but you're nervous because you're so excited that's adrenaline get that adrenaline yeah. going and then anything is possible absolutely oh okay. you're you're blessed because the opposite of that is it can paralyze you but yeah. if, if, if that's your a game when it comes no, out no. there that's like whoo that's you that's me? your dream of that right i mean yeah. if his name wasn't mason and be manning he's just like one of the manning boys put him in give him the ball he can go he knows what it's all about the pressure just makes it even better congrats on the debut album thank you so much it's I appreciate so good it. to see you we love it when you come to see us at the opry please come back soon absolutely i would love love that. I would love that so much. That's amazing. All right, everybody. I'll see you in my dreams is the name of the album. He's going to be at the basement East tomorrow night. Doors are at seven. Go see him and stay in touch with him on social media. Mason Ramsey in the studio this morning. More coffee country and Cody is on WSM. Yeah, we're hanging out this morning. We got a lot of things to talk about. Entertainment headlines. I love when there are lots of little bits that happen over the weekend and I gather them all up and I bring them right to you so you know all of the entertainment headlines. You walk into work feeling really confident about yourself. Like somebody says, hey, did you know uh, Morgan Wallen? He played in Knoxville. And you're like, yeah, I know. I know all about it. 80,000 plus people on Friday night and on Sunday night. Why? Because Kelly told me on WSM. I feel like that's my gift to everyone is to give them information Mm -hmm. so that they really feel informed when they walk in. Yes, and very smart because they didn't want to mess with Saturday because the Vols had the big game in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So you go watch the game, come back, see us Sunday. He probably wanted to watch the game. I don't want to sing. I want to watch the game. I guarantee (laughs) that was probably part of it. Yeah, let's talk about Morgan Wallen to start off. He did have two big shows in Knoxville. These were headlining shows, Neyland Stadium. Holy cow, the pictures are incredible. As we mentioned, well over 80,000 fans every Mm -hmm. night on Friday night and then again on Sunday night. And he had some special guests. Friday night, his walkout was an all-vols walkout. So he (laughs) had the World Series a college world series championship baseball team from Tennessee. They were all with him. He was holding their trophy, by the way, when he was walking out through the tunnel. And then on Sunday night, Peyton Manning (laughs) is all done up in his Vols gear, including pads, like pads and helmet and the jersey, the 16 jersey and everything. I mean, it's funny because we haven't seen him like that in a while. Not in orange. Not in that jersey in a long time. No, no. So it was really something special. (laughs) Friday night, Eric Church came out and performed with him. Sunday night, he had Miranda Lambert and Darius Rucker, and he did Wagon Wheel with Darius. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's just so cool. That's really yeah. cool. So very fun night for anybody that had a chance mm-hmm. to go and see him. Incredible shows in Knoxville. He grew up in uh, Sneedville, about an hour north of Knoxville, but obviously okay. right in the heart of uh, of Tennessee country. So that's, uh, yeah, that's certainly. Isn't it cool that both he and Kelsey got to do sold out hometown gig she sold yes. out thompson bowling and he's doing a couple of nights at neilan so it's, it's just really cool it truly is one of those moments where you're like i did it and i get to go back home and do this in front of the people that mm-hmm. saw me at the very beginning so yep. super super special for him congrats to morgan okay vince gill other side he was <laughs> not in knoxville he was in las vegas he was inside the sphere we talked about how massive this place is so vince has been playing with the eagles since 2017 and he has been doing a lot of the you know songs where you would hear glenn fry usually do those vocals when they lost glenn mm-hmm. he kind of took over and did that spot one of the songs that he got to do at the opening night of their residency in the sphere was heartache tonight it's huge and all-encompassing and as you mentioned it looks like a planetarium 
but it's all projections around you as you're listening to the Eagles perform. If only the sphere were around when I was in college. Oh, you would have had a good time. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I knew it was crazy, but that's even crazier than I could right? have imagined. I mean, it really is a very psychedelic mm. experience. There. If you want to see them, yeah. Eagles residency runs through January mm. 2025. Mm. They might add more shows after that. Not sure, but come, uh, come get your tickets. Come to Nashville, please. I mean, Come to I Nashville. am desperate yeah. to see them before they, they said yeah. this is the last run. Well, John Cowan was with us last week That's and he's right. with the doobies and they're yes. opening a lot of the shows and he goes, yes. oh, they're going to, they're going to keep going for a while. And he said he so, thought they would get a yeah. Nashville date. So, so you heard right. it inside yes. scoop. All right. Hopefully it's going to happen. We were talking about things happening at weddings over the weekend. There were a lot of weddings. I had two friends that were at two different weddings mm -hmm. and I'm sure there were many, many others that tied the knot. So that got me thinking. Worst thing that you've seen happen at a wedding. Annie Nye joins us now with her two cents. So the weekend this this weekend, that wedding was in the Poconos and it was fun. Yes, it was so fun. Nothing terrible happened. Nothing terrible happened. Although it was set in the woods <laughs> in a cabin and there were rowboats. So you really were set yeah. up for something that could There have, was potential. There was a lot of potential. But here I am. <laughs> I made it back. The danger was all around oh, you. And... and we came out unscathed. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Okay, bad thing that's happened at a wedding. Have you seen um, anything? Not Nothing terrible. This wedding was stunning as ever. Yeah. So beautiful. But we did arrive for the ceremony. And I followed a group of people that were walking. And I said, come on to about 15 of my friends. We're going to follow them. Like, obviously, we're supposed to be walking. So we walk down and we get to this big opening. And there's the entire wedding party the bride and the groom they were doing photos they were doing something i yeah, don't know yeah <laughs> and she nicest girl in the world turns around and she's like no go back go back <laughs> and we're like okay and we're like running back we're like oh no oh no like i hope we didn't ruin her whole day and someone oh. in the front of the line was like who led us this way i was like not me <laughs> not me <laughs> <laughs> you guys not it oh, that's not funny. it nothing, nothing crazy so charlie your wedding almost got destroyed by gale force winds yeah we had yeah. a thunderstorm blow through and like like the the reddest of the red on the radar yes. and the 40 50 mile an hour winds and yeah it was outdoors of course mm -hmm. and we had had all it completely set up beautiful flower arrangements that renee and her bridesmaid had made uh, like took forever to make these things they were perched on top of these pillars and they got they got blown away like truly like we couldn't find them uh the seats had to be totally put back together oh, uh but after the storm the sun came out and you know we'll celebrate 20 years this may so mm. all okay but it Ours, wasn't a fun hour. No. <laughs> Ours was very it similar. Yeah. It wasn't the same day. It was the night before. Mm -hmm. But we had a tent outside and we had a tornado that came mm -hmm. through and knocked the tent down. And the chairs were scattered all around the golf course. And mm -hmm. they were running around getting all of the chairs. My entire wedding party was staying at a hotel and the sign for the hotel got oh. knocked down. They were in the hallways. Yeah, it was a legit tornado. <laughs> That's and there scary. was a there was a moment where I was like, "Is this God telling me not to marry you?" <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, we went through with it. It was fine. It was twenty. Oh, okay. You know, we were twenty five right. years. Listen, so sometimes you just get to the worst before you get to the better. You that know? was so, it. Yeah. That was it. But I think the worst was um, the groom that didn't really want to walk down the aisle oh. at a destination wedding that I was at. He told us hours before he didn't know if he could go mm. through with it. That's. And That's all horrible. of us were like, he's kidding, right? And then no one, we would not leave him. We were like, don't let him out of your sight. <laughs> and we will push and, him down the other. And you're not to. here. Where are you? Like, Jamaica. Yeah, that's like you don't just go home that day. Right. Yeah. I mean, this would this could have been the prequel to The Hangover. Ooh. He could have disappeared and then we'd never find oh, him. Oh so, no. They're happily married to this day. So, it all went oh. well. And can I show, share with you just a little clip of one of my favorite all-time wedding, wedding uh, faux pas? Yes. Here we go. Me? I, Ross... I, Ross, take the Emily, take the Rachel. <laughs> oh, it's one of the best ones. One of I, the best ones. I remember watching it live. I mean, I was like, whoa, he said Rachel. <laughs> he said Rachel. Hopefully nothing like that is ever going to happen at your wedding if you are watching us and you are not married yet. So we will wish you nothing but the best. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Um, come back tomorrow. We're going to rewind to the stage of the Grand Ole Opry. Yep. Highlight moments from the weekend shows. Jimmy Fortune and Hannah Ellis. And we'll have new music from Mackenzie Fitz. Yeah.
Have a good one. 